Welcome back. I'm Ted Redden. Today, thanks to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts, we are driving a 1964 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud 3. It has a naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8 mated to a four-speed automatic. It's a GM Hydromatic gearbox to smooth out those shifts, although we'll see how smooth that one two is once we get out on the road. And this is the ultimate piece of luxury motoring in the 1960s. Now, you may recognize this car from lots of movies, and the Bentley S2 is the sister to the Silver Cloud. So if you've watched The Parent Trap when she arrives in London, she is escorted around in a Bentley S2. And I have to admit, that is the first thing I thought of when I saw this car was the Bentley S2. But man, oh man, does this thing have an outrageous presence. Now, the Silver Cloud 3 has a bunch of upgrades since the previous versions, and the easiest way to differentiate a three from a one or a two are these headlights because you've got the quad headlights up front next to the giant Rolls Royce grille. The one and two have single headlamps. The Silver Cloud 1 also had an inline six. They came out with this V8 later on, and between the two and the three, the three gets an improved and upgraded crankshaft and a higher compression ratio. Apparently, the Silver Cloud 2s were breaking crankshafts. That's no good. And then fuel changed, so they increased the compression ratio, so that way these could run a little smoother. However, they did not run as smoothly as the Silver Cloud 1. Apparently, that i6 was a real gem. So first, let me show you under the hood. And it's a little bit of a trick because they open on each side. So we pull that lever down to reveal our SU carburetors. Very cool. Our Rolls Royce badge, London Derby and crew, made in England over here. Very cool. And we'll open up the other side as well. What a great mechanism that is. We got our coach stripes down the side there. And these are very light. I mean, this is really like airplane stuff, but there she is. This is a bit bigger than I think Rolls Royce had ever intended to put in this car. So they really did have to wedge this V8 in here. You'll see those exhaust headers right up against the edges of that engine compartment. And apparently in order to work on this car, you do need to do some serious finagling. Apparently with spark plugs, you need to remove wheels to get in there. So this is no easy feat to play with. Now it has power steering, hydraulic brakes, and an incredibly smooth suspension. Stylistically, there are things that I still see on Phantoms today, which is wild. Like this big kind of blank section here, you still notice that on a Phantom because inside you've got your mirror and you want to be hidden. Your head should be hidden. You don't want to be seen in the Rolls Royce. No, that would be gauche. You want to be a little bit hidden. And then here you've got this great, oh, if I can get it down, great armrest. And in the rear seats, quite luxurious because we have our cigar ashtrays here and these great trays. Check out the mechanism on this. That is wicked. Now, it's at a strange angle. I don't know if you can adjust that, probably not, but uh, sure, I suppose back in the day, this is plenty. You're not gonna put a laptop on there because, well, that wasn't the thing. The rear passengers even get this little footstep down here, which is kind of comfortable and luxurious. To extract yourself, you've got these beautiful handles here. I'm not gonna pull them too hard because who knows how well those are fixed after all these years. And then power windows, which is very nice. Back here, lots of chrome, the big Rolls Royce badge, front and center. And then to open this large hatch, very simple with this button, and we have a pretty big space back here, but if you'll notice, this is elevated. So what on earth is going on here? Well, if we remove this, you reveal that you have a spare tire back here, all of your tools, and maybe the coolest feature in the car, you have a flashlight. And check this out. There's no battery, it plugs into the car. So let me show you where this plugs in. Come right up front here. Plug this in on the dashboard. 
and look at that. We've got light. How cool. All right, we'll put this back gently. This is a, a relic if there ever was one. But then there's even this little flap here. If you pop that up, this gives us access to check our tire pressure. So you just make sure that you've got the valve stem sitting right here, and there you go. You can actually just check the tire pressure in your spare, no problems. How about that? Now this one has a battery switch back here. I don't know if that is original or not, but hey, always helpful. And let's take a look up front. This is where the driving party begins. It's so wonderful, and these seats are so well sprung. It's a comfortable place to be. All the switch gear and touch points are, are, are either leather or chrome or whatever. It's wild. There's storage in the doors. Very cool. And down here, you'll see the beautiful red carpet laid out for us. So let's take a look up here. Now, I actually don't know all of the controls up here because there is a switch here that says N and H. I do not know if that is designed for the power steering adjustment or something. Maybe you could tell me in the comments. I've done like a tiny bit of research to try to find out. Didn't ask anybody knowledgeable enough, but we do have our own tray here for the driver and passenger and there's our ashtray. To start the silver cloud, we've got our key, we've got our central ignition here. Jumps right to life. It's a very smooth, happy, low revving engine. Put our parking brake down, into gear. And away we go. is quite the barge. Let's see how it gets out of the hole. That is much quicker than I anticipated. Holy cow. Oh, the suspension is so smooth. This power steering is incredible. There's a little bit, I don't want to say play because there's always something happening. It's just that there's a just a tiny bit of like damped sort of dead space that it's it's not not doing anything. It doesn't feel loose. It's just that there's clearly some damping in the steering, obviously for the sake of luxury. Excuse me, puppy. Wafting so gently and effortlessly over these New England bumps. And the brakes, the pedal, there's like nothing, 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 and then there's something. Very commanding sound to the indicator. driving a Freightliner car hauler that's 78 feet long recently, and I'm getting used to bigger things. So this doesn't feel that intimidating, honestly, but it is quite large. Nice and easy over the speed bump. Oh yeah.
lucky us, we do have good brakes on this thing. They just, they work in a very small range of pedal travel. So you have to modulate accordingly. Steering is essentially a one finger deal. It is so light, it is so easy, but it's also not like cheap and cheesy feeling. It feels luxurious. The horn, wonderful, classy. We like that. And the throttle is just immediately responsive. The transmission can be a little bit clunky when you go between, especially first and second gear. It's just a little bit of a shunt when you enter that gear, but it's nothing outrageous or egregious. It's still very palatable. If you just smooth it out by pulling out of the throttle a little bit, it helps. I'm sat up so tall in the vehicle. It's kind of incredible. Has all the vibes of a modern Phantom just with old world charm and steering. I just imagine having this sitting side by side in a garage with a 356 Speedster. You'd have the car you're chauffeured in and the car that you go and blast around and pick up your dates in. It handles surprisingly well. And just like the old Jags, you've got this three spoke and the center spoke is designed to go straight up and down how it's supposed to look and I love looking across this giant hood at the spirit of ecstasy. I love the rumble of this V8. It just wafts along on torque and it's very similar to what we've got today in the Rolls-Royce world where like modern Rolls-Royces were V8s and V12s and they're not about being shouty and ostentatious. They're about providing the torque necessary. You just can't believe how smooth it is. This must have been so earth shattering to drive and be driven in, in the 1960s. Ugh. Oh my goodness, please BMW, don't be a BMW. That was some swerving I did not like to see. As big as this is, I don't know that it's exactly safe for me to be in an accident with. Another luxury feature, oh yes. Armrests that come out of the seats, that's pretty good. Cool hinging on everything that moves in this from the rear trays to this, I love it. our high dramatic transmission giving us high drama on the downshift. It's a little bit of effort involved in just keeping it going straight down the road just because of the steering, but it's not, it's not terribly difficult to drive. It's actually really, really simple once you get used to it. And it's kind of an underhanded driving experience, as you'd say. Ooh, someone lost a tire.
gets up to speed really quick and it's pretty comfortable at speed. I'm shocked. I think car and driver or road and track topped it out at like 104 miles an hour, somewhere in that range. I don't know that I'd be so brave to do that. But it is just surprisingly quiet. I mean, it's a Rolls Royce, so I shouldn't be that surprised. But it's from the 1960s, and its construction is from the 50s. So, I mean, this is pretty incredible. You can see why people still use these for their weddings. You know, it has such an imposing, classy stance. But they're not worth a ton of money. I mean, it's probably $50,000. Efficiency wise, it's not incredible. They went from about 15, 16 miles per gallon on the inline six of the Cloud One to about 10 miles per gallon on the Cloud Two and Three. So we are certainly burning some fuel. I don't think aerodynamics were really a part of the game. It's all about style. be nice to our cyclist over here. We will not pick them up with our giant grill. If you give the queens wave to everybody, then nobody gives you any trouble. And I'm gonna slow down here because I don't need any trouble with this Jeep, with this wide Rolls Royce, oh boy. You know, it's really, it's like not even that wide. It's just like a little difficult to know where your corners are because they're so far away. There will be no canyon carving or hucking of the Silver Cloud 3, but it is fun to drive. I have so much joy driving these Luxo barges, and you know, I thought the ones from the 80s and 90s were pretty entertaining, but man, 1964 had it covered. These things are great. Definitely not sure what the repair bills are, but I know that I'm having a good time. So thank you so much to Bond Group for the opportunity to drive this cool piece of luxurious history. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh boy, I got a big nose to stick out on this one. Gotta be careful. I think we're good.